Hey cucumbers, let me introduce you to my spectrometer. It's a pretty simple design and was partially inspired by another YouTuber called Les's Lab. The main components are a handheld spectroscope, a USB camera sensor, a variable focus lens for the camera, and a 3D printed part to hold it all together. I chose the USB camera in this case instead of a Raspberry Pi camera because there's no setup or programming required. The 8 megapixel camera is probably overkill and you could also use a lower resolution option to reduce the price but I wanted to optimize for image quality. I chose to 3D print the structural part to improve the accuracy of alignment between the components and because it made iterating on the design simpler. Initially, I also tried using the 12 millimeter lens suggested in one of Les's videos, but at least for my setup, the focus seemed to be off. As a result, I switched to the six to 22 millimeter variable lens you see here, which provides a bit more adjustability to the system. You could actually use the spectrometer with just the built-in camera function and visualize spectral like you see here. The image you see is the result of white light from a computer screen. But in terms of quantitative analysis, that's basically the same as using the spectroscope with your eye. Instead, by using the spectrograph software shown here, you can not only capture the spectra data, but then quantify and analyze it using a bunch of useful tools. This was all built by Dr. Friedrich Menges, and the basic software is free to use for individuals. Lastly, I wanted to compare my design with the Gaudi Lab spectrometer that I also purchased. At its core, it utilizes the same principles, with a diffraction grating splitting the light source to be captured as a spectra in the camera. The main pro of the Gaudi design is that it's slightly cheaper and has a thinner profile. The cons are that the camera sensor is significantly smaller, the complex geometry of the case makes modifying the design more difficult, and the diffraction component is self-assembled, which always leaves more room for error. The main con, however, is that I just never managed to get a very good spectra from this device. That could be partly my fault, but in contrast, the homemade spectrometer worked basically right out of the box for me. So in summary, if anyone out there is looking to build a super simple, intuitive, and user-friendly spectrometer, I'd recommend this design. Links to the components used are in the description.